In this lecture, we are going to learn how to create a dynamic component by writing some code and then we will also pass some data to this component and emit events from that dynamic component by executing a piece of code. But before that, let me say that I strongly recommend using ngif for creating dynamic components. There are rarely situations where you absolutely need the imperative approach which you are going to learn next. But using the approach of ngif is so much easier and therefore I highly recommend using that approach for creating dynamic components. With that being said, let's also learn how we can create dynamic components entirely by writing some code. So currently we are rendering this confirm delete component dynamically using ngif directive. But now what we will do is we will remove this line from here or I'll simply comment it for your reference. So now we are not using the selector of this confirm delete component anywhere now. When we use the selector of a component, we know that that component gets instantiated and its view gets rendered in the DOM. But now we are not using the selector of this confirm delete component. So now what we want is we want to write some code and using that code first we want to instantiate this confirm delete component and then we want to render its view somewhere in the DOM. So let's see how we can do that. Let me save this file and I'll close this user component.html file because now everything we are going to do is inside the component class. Now the next question is where should we write the code to create and render the component dynamically? Well, here our requirement is when the delete button for a user is clicked at that time only we want to render the confirm delete component right and from where we are displaying these users we are displaying these users from the user component so in the user component we have this users array and we are looping over this users array to display all the users and inside this user components only we have the delete button so we are going to write the code to create a component dynamically and render it inside this user component so first of all, I'll go ahead and I'll create a method. I'm going to call this method show confirm delete. You can name this method anything. And inside this method, we are going to write the logic of instantiating the confirm delete component and also rendering it in the DOM. Now, when do we want to call this show confirm delete method? We want to call this method when this delete button is clicked. And when this delete button is clicked, we are calling this on delete clicked method. So let's go to user component.ts. And from here, I'm going to comment these two lines. For now, we don't need it. And from within this method, we are simply going to call this show confirm delete method. And in order to access this method, we also need to use this keyword. Okay, so this is the first step. Now, when we were using the ngif approach, there we were also passing the user object, the user which we want to delete using the property binding. In the same way, if we want to pass a data to the component which we are creating dynamically using code, all we can do is we can pass it as an argument to this method. So, for example, here let's say I'll create a parameter, I'll call it user. It is going to be of type user. And when I'm calling this show confirm delete method, here we have this user to delete property. We are going to pass this user to delete property to this show confirm delete. So here we will simply say this dot user to delete. And remember from last lecture that to this user to delete, we are assigning the user object which we want to delete. And we are getting this user object from the view. So when we are calling this on delete click method there we are also passing the user object for which the delete button has been clicked so in this way we can pass data to the dynamic component now the first thing which we need to do here is we need to create an instance of confirm delete component for that we cannot simply go ahead and we can use new keyword and try to instantiate this confirm delete component it is not going to work. Let's also assign it to a variable. Let's simply call it component. So this approach is not going to work. It is not going to throw any error because this is a valid TypeScript expression. So it will not throw any error, but 
here when we try to instantiate a component class like this it is not going to work because behind the scenes angular does a lot of work when rendering a component in the ui it does not just create an instance of the component class but it does a lot of things behind the scenes for example angular needs to attach the view template it needs to wire up the change detection and many more things but this line here where we are trying to instantiate this confirm delete component by using new keyword it is simply creating an instance of confirm delete component class this is just a normal javascript object and this is not just the only thing which angular needs in order to render the view in the web page so this is not how we need to instantiate the dynamic component this will not work so let's remove this line now in order to create an instance of confirm delete component we can simply ask angular to do that and for that angular gives us a tool called as component factory and in order to get access to that component factory we want angular to inject an instance of component factory resolver so here we have a constructor in this constructor i'm going to create a private parameter and let's simply call it component factory resolver and this should be of type component factory resolver and in order to use this component factory resolver we also need to import it from angular slash co okay so in this way inside this component factory resolver parameter since we are using a private keyword before it behind the scenes a property called component factory resolver will be created and that property will store an instance of this component factory resolver class now we can use that instance to get access to component factory so inside this method let's simply say this dot component factory resolver dot resolve component factory and to this method we need to pass the type of the component class which we want to instantiate in this case we want to have an instance of confirm delete component so let's pass the name of that class and in this way angular will create an instance of confirm delete component class for us now this resolve component factory this method will return us a component factory it will not return us component itself but it will return us a component factory and we can assign it to a variable so let's go ahead and let's create a variable and let's call it confirm delete component factory okay you can name it anything but i'm simply going to call it confirm delete component factory let's also move it in separate lines so that it will be more readable all right so again this resolve component factory it is going to return us a component factory and we are storing that component factory inside this confirm delete component factory variable so now this confirm delete component factory it is an object which knows how to create confirm delete component so this is the first thing which we need to do here we are trying to create an instance of confirm delete component keep in mind that the instance has not been created yet we have a component factory using which we can create an instance but the instance is not created yet now as we learned we can use this component factory to create a concrete component but to do that we also need a place where we can attach it in the dom so once we have created an instance of the confirm delete component we also want to render its view somewhere in the dom so now we also need to tell angular where in the dom we want to render the view of this confirm delete component because when we are creating a dynamic component by writing some code there we are not using any selector so angular does not know where to render the view of a dynamic component so we also need to tell that to the angular so the first thing for that which we need to do is let's say we want to render the view of confirm delete component after this table so after this table i am going to create a div and within this div i want to render the view of confirm delete component now how we will tell angular that within this div we want to render the view of confirm delete component here this div it is going to be the container for the view of confirm delete component so here we need an instance of 
view container ref the view container ref is an object which is managed internally by angular which gives angular a reference a pointer to a place in the dom and using that reference angular can manipulate that place in the dom and you might remember view container ref from our lectures where we learned how to create a custom structural directive so what we will do is we will create a directive and in that directive we will have a property and that property will store a reference to a dom element inside which we want to render the view of confirm delete component now how are we going to do that first of all let's go ahead and let's create a directive so inside this app folder i'm going to create a directive for that let's create a file and i want to name the directive as view container you can name it anything dot directive dot ts and let me make this c in capital and in here let's go and let's create a directive class and let's export it let's decorate this class with add directive decorator and in order to use this add directive decorator we also need to import it from angular slash go and to this add directive decorator let's pass a metadata object and in there let's specify a selector and we have learned that when we use a directive there we use an attribute selector and for the attribute selector we need to specify square brackets and in there we need to specify a name for the selector let's simply call it app container okay and let's go ahead and let's use this app container on that div where we want to render the view of confirm delete component so basically here let's save the changes now in the directive class let's go ahead and let's specify constructor and inside this constructor we are going to create a public parameter so behind the scenes it will create a public property and let's call it view container and it is going to be of type view container ref okay and in order to use this view container ref we also need to import it from angular slash go so in this way behind the scenes a public property called view container will be created which will store the reference of the dom element on which we are using the selector of this view container directive basically in this example this view container it will store a reference of this div element because it is on this div element where we are using the selector of that directive now the one thing which is left here is we have created this directive but we have not registered it so let's go ahead and let's register this view container directive in the app module so here we have this app module.ts file there in the declaration section let's declare this view container okay with this let's save the changes let's quickly check if we have any error in the web page we don't have any error let's close this app module.ts file okay so now since we have used that directive on this div that directive has a view container property which will store a reference to this div right so now what we are going to do is we are going to access a reference to this div from the component class so let me first close this confirm delete component.html let's also close this directive or i'll keep this directive open let's go to user component.ts file okay and here i'm going to create a property let me create that property here and i'm going to call it maybe container and in this container what i want is i want to store a reference of view container directive i want to store a reference of this directive so here the type is going to be view container okay now on this container i am going to use at view child decorator and in order to use this view child decorator we also need to import it from angular slash go so let's first go ahead and let's do that okay and to this view child decorator we need to pass a parameter 
So basically, in the view of this user component, if I go to user component.html, there we are using this app container directive. So we can access this app container directive using view child decorator. And that's what we are trying to do here. So here we are going to pass the type of the view container directive. So the type will be view container, the directive class name. Okay. So in this case, now this view child, it will find the first occurrence of the selector of this view container directive. In this case, we have only one occurrence, this occurrence. So a reference of this app container will be assigned to this container property here. Okay, basically this container is going to store a reference of view container directive. Now here, since we are using Angular version 8, we also need to pass the options object here to this view child decorator. And there we are simply going to set the static property to false. Okay, in Angular 16, you don't need to do this, but in Angular 8, you have to also specify this options object. All right, so this container, it is storing a reference of view container directive. Now using this container property, we can access the view container ref. So here, we can simply say this dot container, which is storing a reference of view container directive. In that class, in this view container directive class, we have a property called view container, which is of type view container ref. So we want to access this view container property. So we can say container dot view container. And we are going to store it in a variable. Let's call this variable maybe container view ref. So this container view ref, it is going to store a reference of this div. And inside this div, we want to render the view of confirm delete component, right? So the next thing which we need to do is if inside that container, again, the container is this div. So if inside this div, there is already something rendered, we want to clear it. For that, we can say container view ref. And on that, we can call this clear method. So if anything already rendered within this view, we are clearing it. And now, finally, we can use our component factory, which we are storing inside this confirm delete component factory variable. We can use it to create a new instance of confirm delete component and render it inside this container view ref view. For that, we can simply say container view ref dot and on this we have a method called create component to this create component we need to pass the component factory and we have a component factory inside this variable so we will pass it here so in this way here we are creating an instance and here we are rendering the instance of that component in the dom Okay, with this, let's save the changes. Let's go to the web page and let me click on this delete button. You will notice that nothing is happening. Let me go ahead and let me open the developer console and let's see if we have any error. And the error says no component factory found for confirm delete component. Did you add it to at ng module dot entry components? So, Let's try to understand what is entry component and how to fix this issue in our next lecture.